Do you also find it annoying having to hit several buttons on your keyboard or to fumble with your mouse to start the engine? Well, here's what you can do about it. You can buy an original aircraft switch and try to modify it for your simulator. You can buy high quality starter switches made for flight simulators for a lot of money. Or you can make your own, which is neither expensive nor very difficult. This is what you need. A common key lock. I bought this one for 14 euros 99 at my local hardware store. A cylindrical spacer nut, which fits the diameter of your key lock axis. In my case, it was an M6 nut, which cost me 14 cents. For position pickup, you need a standard rotary switch with 30 degrees increments. Make sure its shaft has about the same diameter as the inner diameter of your spacer nut. This one costs 3 euros 60 at a popular electronic shop. You need a piece of M4 threaded rod and some fitting nuts. A common extension spring. Make sure it has a right hand thread which most springs have anyway. Also make sure the spring fits over your spacer nut. A small sheet of any material you can process easily. Material isn't that important, could be plastic, wood or aluminium. It should have a thickness of around 3 mm. And finally some panel to mount the switch onto. It should have a minimum thickness of about 5 mm but should not be thicker than the threads on your key lock. You should be able to source all parts you need for under 25 euros. You need just some basic tools for this build. A drill and a 4mm bit, a bit by the size of your rotary switch thread and one the size of your key lock thread, some pliers and pincers, a metal saw, a small screwdriver, some wrenches, some metal files and a pen to mark stuff. We're going to start by modifying our key lock. Trim down its arm until it has a length of about 25 mm. Next, cut off a 10 mm piece of your spacer nut. Attach this piece to the shaft of your rotary switch. Make sure the shaft only takes about half of the length of the spacer nut. Place the modified rotary switch next to the key lock and mark the distance between them as shown here on your threaded rod. In my case this is about 40 mm. Cut off this piece from your threaded rod. Then use your saw and a file to make a little notch on one end, just big enough to fit in a screwdriver. Make a second piece exactly like the first one. Now take your sheet of any material and transform it into a piece that looks like this. We need it as a mount for the rotary switch. I made mine using a CNC machine, but it could also be 3D printed or cut out using only hand tools very easily. You can find a 3D file and technical drawings with all dimensions on my website. Next we're going to modify our spring into a shape like this. Mark about 5 threads on your spring and cut them off using a pair of pincers. It's a good idea to wear protective gloves when handling springs. Now we need to bend out the ends on both sides. A useful trick is to put a threaded rod through the spring and hold it with pliers while bending out the ends. Bend out both ends to about a 100 degree angle and make sure the left arm is at least 18 mm long.
bend the other arm in two right angles. An easy way to do this is by holding the spring in pliers and pushing it against a hard surface. Leave about 5 mm past the second right angle and cut off the rest. Now attach the spring to the rotary switch with the angled arm pointing upwards. Push the spring all the way back over the threads so it does not cover the nut. Now it's time to prepare the panel. On the rear side of your panel mark the position where you want your key switch to be. Then add marks 2.5 cm to the left and 2 cm to the right. Drill 4 mm holes on the left and right marks and a hole by the diameter of your key switch at the center mark. The 4 mm holes should not go through the front of the panel. We can now put everything together. We're going to start with the key lock. Screw off the nut and take out the arm. Make sure to secure the inner part of the lock because without the nut it could come apart easily. Secure the lock with its outer nut and put the arm back on. But instead of the small nut, screw on the modified rotary switch. Use pliers to firmly tighten it. You can now move the spring down over the nut. Take your modified 4mm rods and screw them in the side holes in your panel. Don't screw them in too tightly or they might come out the front end of your panel. Maybe use some super glue to secure them in place. Next we're going to adjust the angular position of the key lock. For that loosen up its nut so that it can rotate freely. With the key in its leftmost position, rotate the lock counterclockwise until the arm hits the left rod. This is going to be our off position. Now secure the key switch there with its nut. With the key lock secured in the correct position, we can now add the mount for the rotary switch. For that, screw on M4 nuts on each side rod. Unfasten the nut of the switch and push in our rotary switch mount. We are now going to adjust the position of the rotary switch. With the key lock in the off position, Turn the rotary switch counterclockwise to a stop. This should be its leftmost position. Secure the rotary switch. Push the L-shaped end of the spring under the arm of the key lock. Now make sure the other arm of the spring touches the rod right at the third switch position. If it doesn't, bend it left or right until it does. Almost finished now. Secure the rotary switch mount with some more nuts, tighten them and we're done. Here's another close-up of how the switch works. The spring catches the left rod just after the third switching, which is the both magnetos position. The next one is the starter and it is spring returned to the both position like in the real aircraft. Now all that's left to do is make a cool looking panel and you're ready to start your engine. If you have the means to add this switch to an authentic panel, it will make it look and feel even more realistic. 
That's it for today, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As said, you can find 3D files and drawings to this build on my website. Have fun and all the best with your own K-Switch build. See you next time.